Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, September 16th, 2016. I'm Laferin Fraser with the details. Proprietor of the Chill Spot Bar and Grill, Lance Oliver, says that he has appealed the planning board's decision to close his business. In an interview today with SVG TV News, Oliver says that the two-week notice to close his business by today, September 16th, by the planning board is noted, but he has appealed. He admits to our news team that his employees are anxious about the closure, but but he is seeking further deliberation on the matter. Yeah, we open. Um, we're not sure exactly what's going to happen from, from now on. I mean, but we, we're just waiting. Yeah. Your workers, how, what do you send them say, workers? I mean, yeah, a lot of them are just they're scared, I mean, worried. Um, because they know if we close, I mean, it's going to. It's not, it's not gonna be good for them. I mean, so they they're very concerned. You know, all I can tell them. I mean, we just gotta wait and see what would happen. Yeah. And what time you looking to close business? I see a lot of people still coming and supporting you. What time you expect to close? Now? Well, um, we we not sure. We not sure. We not sure. We not sure what gonna happen. Because you have 24 hours basically. Well, I think um, based on all the letter that we had, we, we got, um, we supposed to close two days supposed to be last day, right? Yeah. Um, but we we did make some um, uh, we we did appeal, so uh, we're just waiting on that. Oliver further expressed his frustration over the accusations that he did not make efforts to adhere to rules and he was reckless in his operations. We're trying to make it out like we 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 want we were trying to be um, non-compliant. I mean, we we did everything that we we, we could have done. Um, every time we get a letter from there, we 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 responded, and you know, all all the letters we have everything and we have everything. You know, so, you know, the, the story going out that, you know, I mean, we, we above the law and all this kind of, all this kind of nonsense um, is not true. You know, I mean, that's, 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 that's what hurting me most about this thing. I mean, the, you know, these people trying to make it, make it, make us look like, you know, I mean, we are, we are, we are real bad people. I mean, which we know we're not, you know, I mean, we try to follow the law. You know, I mean, sometimes there may be, we may, we may not get it right, but I mean, we are, we are human, you know. I mean, if you think, uh, you know, we, we, we're doing something wrong, I mean, you could, come and talk, you could come and talk to us, you know, but don't, fool, don't try to fool people. When our news team visited the eatery earlier today, several patrons took the opportunity to show their support and expressed their disappointment at the turn of events. And I usually bring a lot of people here because some of the foreigners, even a lot of them you could say, they don't always want to eat the restaurant food. They want to have a local food, line with local people in an atmosphere like Wallace has here. So I usually bring them around. So I think the government should work along with Lance. If you have any problem or anything, they should sort it out in the benefit of intention. And the economy is very tight. So we need the government to work along with the business owner and get things up and moving. We have a lot of employees, employees here. St. Vincent Hard, we can't get employment, we can't get jobs. So they should work hand in hand and build this country. Work out the differences. It is a sad situation. I'm going to miss here if he has to close. Because to me, the food is nice. This is somewhere that I could always come and eat. And it's sad. Really sad if he has to close. Yes, I, I come here a lot. And I think it's there needs to be some order and I think they're getting there. They started the, they've done a lot of improvement. It's something that I see everywhere overseas. Uh, people like this type. I like it. And as long as it's open, I'll be coming. And tourism consultant Vera Ann Brayton is advocating the need for proper zoning regulations in the country. Brayton, who was speaking to our SVG TV news team, outlined that this is necessary to help persons regulate how they operate. Zoning, and that is a big problem.
we are continue to run into problems with things like chill is a chill yeah, there? Chill. because we don't have proper zoning mm -hmm. it is a problem if it was zoned already we could easily the planning board could have said no this is not it doesn't fit into right. what is zoned for there but to come after the fact and you know it's if we don't have a, a, a land use and zoning plan for, for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, yeah. we run into problems, particularly the Grenadines because they're so small. Credit unions are a significant part of the OECS financial system, which continues to grow. That's according to this country's Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, in his address at the opening ceremony of the 14th annual OECS Credit Union Summit held under the theme Strengthening OECS Credit Union Cooperation, Integration and Innovation. Noting that the OECS Credit Union movement has grown from strength to strength over the years, Dr. Gonsalves highlighted the importance of financial institutions to adapt and stay up to date within a changing environment. Being strengthened as we go. But the very strength of the trade union, of the credit union movement, demands that it, there be alterations. And here I spoke to that necessity of change, the desirability of change. Because if they started very small and they're not multi million dollar operations, you have to have strengthened organizational systems, more efficacious governance and management arrangements and of course you have to satisfy tighter scrutiny by the regulatory authorities in this case in St. Vincent Grenadines, the financial services authority. Bind ourselves in this credit union movement that work towards one another and to make the life better for our children. Are we going to look at all the various challenges we have and see how we can resolve them? how we can make the necessary and desirable changes. Highlighting the issue of enhancing and regulating the credit union operations within the financial system, the Prime Minister pointed out his continued push to have a local amalgamated credit union movement. He further commended the credit union movement for its efforts to provide solidarity and financial security for all its members. The are asking the credit union to have improved and best practice reported standards, which means that you have to change your, your technology, your organization, and the cost of doing business for the credit unions increases. And you have to therefore look for ways to be more efficient, to continue to be competitive and to serve it your the membership level. The importance of solidarity. All of us as members to assist us when we are in difficulty, but importantly to be prudent and don't spend all our money now and put up something for the rainy day. A call has been made for Vincentians to take a proactive approach to reducing crime in the country. The call was made at a workshop held here on Thursday under the theme Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. It featured discussions on the various techniques which could be adopted to reduce incidents of crime and saw participation from organizations such as the RSVG Police Force, the National Commission on Crime Prevention and VINLEC. Speaking at the opening ceremony, General Manager of Paladin Inc., Amoy Monroe, stated that greater importance must be placed on the involvement of the community in fighting crime. Accepted crime prevention through environmental design proposes that we focus on what we can in fact control, which is the opportunities for the commission of crime. Crime experts are now focusing their attention on where crime occur, why particular crime happen in specific physical environments and why these environments may be more prone to criminal activities than other environments. Crime prevention through environmental design 
does not offer a panacea for all crimes. However, it has been found that environmental changes, when coupled with attempts for improvement in community cohesion, it serves to improve and reduce the crime rates. Inspector of the RSVG Police Force, Hezron Ballantyne, also called on Vincentians to develop a sense of community togetherness by looking out more for each other. This, he says, will in turn help the police to solve some of the crimes taking place in society. Very important to talk to your neighbors. By knowing your neighbors, you will know the people who belong in your neighborhood. For instance, a burglar might enter one of your neighbor's home, and you might not think twice if you didn't know the people who live there. Citizens remain alert for suspicious activities and report those activities to the police. Persons, we realize, are very careful in terms of disseminating information in respect of criminal activities. We understand why Persons are not willing to come forward. Persons are also looking at their safety. But I can assure you, you don't have to even give your names. You can call, tell the police something. And once we have the information, we will act. Inspector Ballantyne added that the RSVG police force will educate Vincentians on ways to protect themselves against criminal elements. And prevention exhibitions. The World St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force for the past years has embarked on a number of crime prevention exhibitions. This is one of the ways that we choose to reach the public so that we can make them aware of how to secure their homes from time to time. If we have additional information that we have to bring them up to date with, we will do so. Because Crime is all of us business. This year we are hoping to host our crime prevention again in front of the Barracks Central Police Station in, sometime in December. We had one just prior to the carnival. And we are also hoping to have it decentralized um, within the country, even up to the Grenadines. The abandonment of a newborn baby demands serious attention, so says Gender Affairs Coordinator Polly Oliver. Her comments came just on the heels of an incident which took place on Wednesday when a mother abandoned her newborn baby in a pit in the community of Fitzhughes. Oliver told SVG TV News today that the ministry fully intends to intervene and implement several measures, including involvement of the police. She said one must, however, remain cognizant of several factors which can can motivate an individual to carry out such an act, naming family support and living environment as just a couple of those factors. The Gender Affairs Coordinator stated that a home assessment is one of the first things that must be done. We would have to take into consider, uh, consideration also um, where these people spend a lot of their time and go into these areas and find out and see if we can respond um, directly to, to the person's need because of the person's priorities. And as, as we say, we first have to do that need assessment in, able, um, in order to respond the best way we know how. What are some of the measures the ministry have taken in the past and how effective were they? Well, what I do know would have happened in the, the, the past that uh, the child, let us say the child that would have been abandoned, would be provided with safety, a home of safety. The woman, um, which may fall directly under um, the auspices of the Gender Affairs Division, we seek to empower her, provide her with whatever necessities she may need. Oliver further noted that the situation also calls for a psychologist to determine what triggered the mother's action so as to determine the best possible course of action, adding that efforts will be made to contact the baby's father as the responsibility should not lie solely with the mother. This woman just did not make a baby on her own, so there must be a father to this child, which we must also try to reach and make sure that he is also part of the solution, um, that he's there. And let us take, let us take it that, the, as I was saying earlier, the whole concept of care does not just rest with the woman. We have to 
defeminize it and as we are saying both men and women both mothers and fathers are expected to share in the burden of care so when we would have gotten the the, the, the facts about this situation it, it drives us again to make sure that we pay attention to our fathers and the engaging our men as partners in the whole solution to to the issues that are confronting us mm -hmm. including domestic violence child abuse and all the other social ills that we experience that we respond here to from the ministry meanwhile monitoring evaluation officer Lafleur Kwame Harry stated the matter is already under investigation as the protection and proper care of the baby are the primary foci Child protection officers within the Family Affairs Division, that's a division within our ministry, they are currently investigating the matter in collaboration with both the police and the social worker at the Mental Cato Memorial Hospital. Because we have to ensure that on the release from hospital, this child is um, in the care of somebody. And we would like to ensure that the child is in familiar um, um, surroundings. So so we will try to see if we can integrate that person, that child with the family, the family of either the mother or father. If that case is not um, deemed necessary, then through investigation and assessment by the child protection officers, they can determine if the child is a prospect for foster care or even being placed in, in, a, in a child um, care institution. Confidence and enthusiasm were just a few of the qualities expressed by leaders of two of the dance groups performing in this leg of the 12th KCCU National Dance Festival. Speaking with SVG TV on Thursday, leader of popular dance group Trendy Jenna's Sherlene Gibson gave a glimpse into the performance patrons should expect from her and her partner this coming Saturday. I like to aim high. So... I have two performances. I have a duet with my dance partner, that is, the only one, and um, I have a solo. Uh -huh. I hope to aim higher with my solo, because this is the first time I'm doing a solo somewhat different, because everyone expects me to come with a, a dance hall, hip hop kind of genre, but this time it's more of a contemporary, modern-ish, slight hip-hop. So right now I'm kind of out of my comfort zone when it comes, as it relates to my solo. So with that one, I, I had a, I placed a lot of emphasis on my practicing with regards to my solo. So I'm hoping to aim high with that one. Leader of the Breakstorm crew, Daron James, noted that their biggest sacrifice since being in the festival has been to practice long into the night. Well, we just walk home. <laughs> we, just, we just wait, we just practice. We're supposed to practice from 4 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. So then we finish after 7, so we can care for the not be able to catch one. So sometimes they just walk home after practice. And do you think that all of this is worth it? To me? Yeah, I believe so. This Saturday, September 17th, is being observed as International Coastal Cleanup Day, the brainchild of Ocean Conservancy, an international group that encourages coastal communities and members of the public to clean beaches. Here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Richmond Vale Academy, the RVA, will participate in the activity on September 24th, and their efforts will be primarily focused in North Leeward, where the academy is located. Rose Hall resident Selwyn Patterson, a teacher, at RVA said the institution will join with communities, sports and cultural groups in Richmond, Chateaubelair, Rosebank, Trimaca and Cumberland to clean up the beaches in those areas. Patterson, who teaches Vincentian history and project management at RVA, said it is important that Vincentians take care of the nation's forests, rivers and beaches as they are vital parts of the ecosystem. This is the 10th annual this is the 10th, sorry, consecutive year that RVA is spearheading cleanup efforts in North Leeward. Last year, Vincentians collected 50 bags of trash on the beaches that they cleaned.